I got the trans opened up. These are the stacks of gears. These are the pinion gears. Uh, goodness, now I'm getting all screwed up. This one sits here. And this is where the clutch basket would link up was with this one. It's all the pinions. This other shaft goes this way. And this is where the actual gears that you'd be replacing are. They just lift out. They're a little stuck. A couple light taps with plastic hammer and just kind of get them loose. They might just be bound up. There's a circlip on these things. Be aware of that. And then there's circlip on this negative. Circlip in this half here, which is where this rides. Don't forget the circlip there. And then there's a circlip on this big wheel here. And then the circlip on this big wheel here. They got to be in there when you put them back on. This one also has uh, an indexing dot, which would line up within here. Uh, index. And that big one would be over here. Okay. Uh, I've already taken off these two outer wheels and gears. This would be an example of like what an okay dog would look like. Nothing fancy about that. And I'm just laying them out in order. The next gear is held on with a snap ring. So you need a snap ring plier. Like so. And then you expand the ring and slide it off. And then you can get this gear off as well. And I'm going to continue to get these off and then I'll show you once it's all apart. I've removed that circlip and taken this apart. This would be this way. Okay, this is where the shift fork would travel is on this one here. And if you look here, not too worn on the side, of course. This is the side that meshes with six gear. You can see how it's worn down here. Certainly, you know, been rubbed a good bit. And here, it's not as bad as some. It's certainly not as good as new. So that's second gear wheel right here. And that would mesh into this way. Onto the sixth gear would slide that way. Six gears held on with another clip. I haven't removed it yet. I'm looking at this and this looks actually very good shape. So good that I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to replace it. Because there's really not much wear in here at all along the face of this. So I'm not sure. Money saves, money saved, of course. We shall see. Shift fork. Uh, this would be here. This is where the big bearing is, and it rests in here with this circlip in this groove. And this circlip rests in that groove. This would sit here. So this is the shift fork that would move second gear in and out. It's certainly worn out. I replaced this once before uh, previously, and I will replace this one again. The others, uh, I'll get some better light in here if I can. Uh, the others don't appear so bad. A little rubbing here and there, but really not much to report. So, so much and so I think I will probably leave them and give it a go without it and we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's where we stand right now. I don't have any parts ordered. I took this all apart to see what parts I needed. I'm going to take out the shift drum and we'll see how that looks. That's always such a crapshoot if it looks bad or not, whether you should replace it or not. I'm with the mindset mine probably won't look all that bad. But we'll find out once I pull it out. Which hold the shift drum assembly in, which is the brackets here and the detent arm and then this the forks can lift out because these brackets cover the rods and then the rods slide out and then you can lift the forks straight up and then this drum will pull straight out as well so I'm going to loosen this, 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 and this to remove the last bolt which is this one right here, it's actually a longer shaft, you'll need a deep 12 millimeter socket you might be able to try and get a box or an open end on there, it's going to suck though, but you definitely need a deep as this shaft is this shaft is part of the bolt. You'll see once it's out, but a deep weld 12 millimeters. This bracket is now free. Pull the retainer off and bolt, and then I'm going to bag them so I don't lose them. And 
Once you have the top open, we can work from the top. We're gonna slide the shaft forward here. And we're gonna pull it. And then the shift fork is free and the shaft. The shift forks are numbered or lettered and the book tells you which way to put them with which way the letter should go so you don't need to worry about that right now too much as far as orientation. We got another one to go here. And magnets can sometimes help. Or just jimmy it. Slide it off. And here is shift fork R and shift fork L. L is the one that goes against second gear. You can see all mine is chewed up. Uh, most of the time, when these get bad, you see the shine here, shine here, it'll be more worn on the pad here, but I've always noticed it's here that mine get ground up. And I'm not entirely sure, but because it's grinding funny, I suppose I should replace the drum just to be sure, because that certainly wouldn't be caused by much else than an oddly positioned drum, because this fork was replaced no, 2,000 miles ago, I went through the bottom, went through the oil pan just to replace the shift fork. And I'm removing those. Now, drum here, you can push it through the other side, there's a bearing. And here is this assembly. I'll zoom out and get a better look here. So this is the uh, neutral sensor nub. It would go against that electrical current circuit. This track here is what will move the L shift fork, which is second gear. The part is sixth gear. You just gotta look in the tracks here to see if it's worn, overly worn. Mine looks really, really clean. I mean, not even a scuff mark on any of these things, so it's so hard for me to want to have to replace it when it's, I want to say, $86 for this part. But I probably should because you're in here anyway. Most people feel this is usually the debated part whether you replace it or not. It's hard, very difficult to determine one way or the other. So, this is what the shift drum looks like. And here's the star. This flat spot detent would be neutral. And then it would rotate around through the gears. Honestly, can't remember the rotation. I think it actually probably goes like this for one and then two, three, four, I think. Doesn't matter. Don't quote me. So that's that removed. Now the case is pretty much gutted, the forks are out, I mean, the transmission shaft is taken apart, Let's see how mine's worn, but not as worn as I was thinking it was going to be, but certainly my dogs are worn on the second gear part, but that face of sixth gear looks really freaking good, so it's hard to say, so this much rotate this way and then it hits and rides up. For me, my second gear was never popping out a load, which is why I thought I could get it by with just the fork replacement, but I kept eating shift rods, the tap would bend, and I get stuck. And certainly it got notchy between one and two. And so, after the last one, I replaced shift fork through the belly, thinking that might just get me by, give it a go. Did the shift rod and the shift shaft again, that was like my third shift shaft. And, well, it didn't work. I got kept getting stuck in gear again now, the shift shaft's not as bad as it once was, that tab could probably be used, but I, I might as well just swap it. So it was so bad to the point, it's like I'm not going to put any more band-aids on, I'm going to pull it all the way apart and see what there all really needs to be replaced inside this. And that's where we stand right now.